Now, as I reported on scene here last week, 14 Squadron from Bruggen were at Goose Bay in Canada recently, practicing operational low flying. And although it's always the air crew who seem to get all the glamour and attention, it takes an awful lot of work by the ground crew to keep the tornadoes they use serviceable. The Tornado GR-1, 17 million pounds of state-of-the-art strike attack aircraft. Its swing-wing design means it can fly at twice the speed of sound and hit 600 miles an hour, 100 feet off the ground. It's designed to carry 1,000 pound high-explosive bombs and AIM-9 Sidewinder missiles. Its terrain-following radar allows it to operate day and night in any weather conditions. There are nine tornadoes on the pan here at Goose, with the 150 million pounds of military hardware being looked after by the 100 ground crew from 14 Squadron. They're responsible for all first-line maintenance of the aircraft, from standard servicing and refueling to minor repairs. Since the air crew have travelled over two and a half thousand miles to train in operational low flying, the pressure is on the ground crew to keep the aircraft serviceable, no matter what the problems are. With the aircraft being pushed to their limits in terms of speed, hours in the air and low flying, maintenance problems increase considerably. It often requires two shifts working round the clock when necessary to keep the planes airborne. The man where the buck stops is the senior engineering officer, squadron leader, Steve Burry. It's always difficult keeping aeroplanes flying, keeping them flying safely. But uh, out here in Goose Bay, we work off a line, which means we can keep an eye on all the aircraft at the same time. Um, in general, that makes things easier. Working out in a, the concrete hardened shelters in Germany means that you, to, uh, to see the aircraft, you've got to go to each aircraft individually. I mean, here at Goose Bay, we've got closed circuit television to watch the aircraft line. Um, it gets very cold out here, so at times we can see what's going on in the cold from the inside in the warm. Today is a, a sunbathing day in Goose Bay, only about minus one. But it can get really very cold out here, which makes life somewhat more difficult working outside. The air crew and ground crew have a very close working relationship. No, he's not getting any illuminations. After each sortie, the pilot discusses any problems he's found. If you pre-selected it, um, they, the wings stay clean. Well, according to the good book, they should come down when you do pre-selection. Four to 45. All problems need to be dealt with quickly, but a complex machine like a tornado needs careful handling. Mistakes cost lives. These shelves are packed with details of the thousands of parts and servicing procedures of the tornado, and it's here that any repair begins. Once the problem has been identified, the various tradesmen get to work. Depending on whether it's to do with the airframe, the avionics, the electronics, the engine, or the weapon system. Each trade has a pet name. These are armourers, called plumbers, since years ago they used plumb lines to align the weapons. They're also responsible for the ejector seat, the pilot's last line of defence, something that must never go wrong, as Bob Bowhill, an armourer sergeant, is only too well aware. We go through all sorts of checks when the ejection seats are being fitted, and after they're fitted, we do a whole series of independent checks to make sure that it works every time. And what about the thought that, that uh, the pilot's lives are in your hands? That's always uppermost. And we'll be seeing how 14 Squadron pilots and navigators got on a bit later on in the program.